Esophageal stents are commonly utilized for a variety of purposes and in modern clinical practice. The most common indications for the treatment of malignant dysphagia, stents can be placed in preoperative and non-operative candidates. Other indications include the treatment of benign esophageal strictures, fistulas and leaks. The representative stent deployment will now be shown, focusing on the endoscopic view. The patient in this case has a very proximal esophageal cancer. There is complete obstruction of the esophagus and the endoscope cannot pass into the distal esophagus or the stomach. The guide wire in this case, a straight biliary guide wire through a straight biliary catheter, is advanced through the tumour and access is obtained to the distal esophagus and stomach. The stent is then advanced over the wire and deployed. Because the tumour is very proximal in this patient, an effort is made to overlap the proximal end of the stent to the very proximal end of the tumour as much as possible. After stent deployment, the delivery catheter and associated guide wire can be removed from the patient. The stent can then be inspected for position, patency and signs of any immediate complications. You can see the stent is in excellent position. Tumour is visible through the stent entrance. The stent is widely patent. Representative stent deployment will now be shown emphasizing the fluoroscopic view. In this patient, the endoscope could be advanced through the tumour to the distal portion of the mass into the gastric cardia. This position is marked endoscopically with an image. The endoscope is then withdrawn to the proximal aspect of the tumour and an image is also obtained. Thus, the distal and the proximal end of the stricture are then clearly marked. A wire, in this case a savoury wire, is advanced through the tumour and into the stomach and the endoscope is removed over the wire. The stent, in this case a fully covered stent, is advanced across the stricture, the distalmost portion of the stent, below the bottom of the tumour. Final adjustments are made, deployment is allowed to commence. In this patient the stent is deployed in a distal proximal manner as is most commonly performed. The stent is fully deployed, clearly bridging the entire tumour. The delivery catheter and its guide wire are then removed from the patient and the stent is left in place, bridging the entire tumour. Endoscopic inspection following deployment usually reveals a fully deployed and well-placed stent. Here you see a fully covered stent in good position across a tumour. Tumour is visible through the stent. Through and through endoscopic evaluation of the stent is not required post-deployment but can be performed if desired. Here you see a retroflex view of a distal stent. Endoscope is then straightened and removed through the stent. Distal portion of the stent is in good position in the gastric cardia. The stent is patent without signs of complication or other difficulties and the proximal end of the stent is above the proximal end of the tumour. If clinically indicated, a stent can be placed in the very proximal esophagus. This requires very precise placement by the endoscopist. Here you see a fully covered stent placed immediately below the upper esophageal sphincter and a patient with a very proximal cancer. This patient tolerated the stent well. Complications can occur. In this case, you see an infolded stent immediately after deployment. Infolding can occur due to poor placement, incorrect stent size, or may be a sign of a non-compliant tumour. The stent can be left in place, removed, or manually adjusted to allow complete expansion. Stent placement can be adjusted following deployment as needed. A rat tooth forceps allows for rapid and efficient stent adjustment in most cases.
This video shows the use of a rat tooth forceps to proximally adjust the position to fully cover an esophageal stent. The stent is moved approximately for a distance of 2 cm. When the stent is felt to be in adequate position, the rat tooth forceps release the stent and the position can be directly assessed endoscopically. If satisfactory, no other adjustment is required. Some stent migrations are associated with recurrent dysphagia and warrant stent replacement. At other times, stent migration is a sign of response to neoadjuvant therapy. Stent migration is unfortunately a common development following deployment, especially with fully covered stents. Most migrations can be managed endoscopically. This video illustrates complete migration of an esophageal stent into the gastric cardia. The stent is grasped by rat tooth forceps around the proximal retrieval string if possible. The stent is then withdrawn through the tumor and the esophagus with the rat tooth forceps. Note here that when the endoscope is removed from the patient, the stent has come off the rat tooth forceps. The rat tooth forceps have been withdrawn back into the endoscope and the patient is reintubated. The stent is located just below the level of upper esophageal sphincter. The endoscope passes into the proximal esophagus. The stent is grasped, again with the rat tooth forceps, by the retrieval string and removed from the patient. Other complications, including tumor ingrowth and overgrowth, can be treated by stent within stent placement. Perforations are rare but can often be managed by other stent placements.